Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Christina Bach, the author of The Kanda, and here on this channel we do some tips and tricks um, when it comes to writing and being an author and being a writer and things like that. So let's get into it. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about finding time to write. So this is something that as an adult I've struggled with, as a kid I struggled with, Generally, you just struggle with this if you're a writer in general. So one of the biggest things is that people get so busy with life and with kids and with marriage and you know, houses and things like that, that it gets really hard to just sit down and write a ton of words. So first off, these are just going to be tricks and tips. You don't have to take all of them and it doesn't have to be like anytime somebody tells you, oh, this works for me, you have to do that. It doesn't work for everybody that way. Every writer is completely different. Some writers write super early in the morning, some of them write super late at night. So it's just kind of what is going to fit for you and what's going to fit for your schedule. So my first tip is going to be to schedule time to write. So if you have a busy schedule, kids have soccer, things have over here, we have to run over here, work has this going on, it's hard to just have the time to be like relax and be like okay I'm in that creative writing mode so let's get going. So the best idea is going to be just to schedule it. Put it into your calendar, put it in your planner, whatever you want. Scheduling is going to be one of the best ways to get some writing done. So that could be any time of day for you. It could be in the mornings, it could be at night, it could be in the afternoon, depending on what your schedule is. Um, I know some writers that get up 4.30 in the flippin' morning <laughs> and will write before anybody else wakes up. Um, I know writers that, you know, if it's quiet in the afternoon, and this generally works for me, early or late morning and early afternoon are my two best times to write because normally my husband, he works night shifts, so he's normally asleep or not in the house. <laughs> so it's quiet and I can get some stuff done. Next, make sure you have a time frame for it. So if you're going to schedule it, you know, pick like an hour a day, maybe work up to a longer time frame to two hours or something like that. Pick a time frame. So say I'm going to write for 30 minutes straight and then that's it. Or I'm going to write for an hour straight. Nobody talk to me <laughs> and that's it. Now I know as a mother and as you know, someone who may just be extremely busy, like if you're running your own company or if you're a boss of a company or you just have a very busy schedule. It's extremely hard to be able to schedule it. You'll be like, there's no holes in my schedule. All right. Number two is going to be demand it. You have to demand this time from yourself as well as from other people around you. And if your loved ones really love you, they'll kind of understand if you want to take an hour a day for yourself. Certain things you can do is just be like, hey, I just need some quiet time for 30 minutes for an hour or something like that. One trick that I did kind of use <laughs> while my nieces were here because you know, teenage girls, they tend to be loud, they tend to be rambunctious, and they want attention all the time. So while they were here, I set a timer. I said, for the next hour, you know, don't bug me, go watch a movie, go do something else, do not bug me, do not come into my office, and just be quiet for this hour, and let me get this stuff done. It worked. <laughs> I set a timer, timer went off, and then the attention went back to them. Problem solved. <laughs> And don't forget that you are allowed to ask for your own time. It's, it's hard, I know, especially for women, it's extremely hard, especially for mothers, to feel like you're taking away from your family time um, and to feel guilty about it if you're saying, hey, I need an hour to myself or I need an hour of quiet time. All honesty, though, if your kids are constantly asking you for attention, your husband's constantly asking you for attention, for work's constantly asking you for attention, it's okay for you to say, I need time for me. And I know this is the hardest thing for, you know, some people to do. I've had to learn it. I'm still learning it. I still, you know, I'm always trying to I'm always trying to find my time to write, but I still get bogged down. My husband needs a lot of attention. And if you're married, you know what I'm talking about. Your spouse needs a lot of attention. <laughs> so, and it's the same thing with having my nieces over or having kids around me. Kids take a lot of attention, a lot of attention. And it's okay for you to say, honey, can you take them for an hour? Or, hey, kids, we're going to do quiet time for an hour. If, they're, if you have kids that are of reader age, get them a book that they want, have them sit down, set a timer, and be like, 
You guys can read for this amount of time while I write for this amount of time. Works perfectly. Let them color for that certain amount of time. Just any way to kind of find a quiet time. And you have to, like I said, you have to find what works for you, what works for your family dynamics, and things like that. Tip number three is going to be go away. That kind of works, doesn't it? Now, if you have toddlers at home, I'm not saying leave them at home and you disappear because that's illegal. Let's not do that. So <laughs> my thought process is if you say, hey, honey, can you take the kids for an hour or two and you leave the house and find somewhere else to go. So for some people, this could be libraries. This could be a cafe. This could be bookstores. This could be on a park bench in your neighborhood. Any of those would work. Finding your own space is a great way to say, have your brain kind of say, all right, it's time to write. So your brain gets more creative too. That is a nice little trick you might want to use. That's on one end of the spectrum. It's just going outside, finding somewhere to go, somewhere that's like a you know 10 minute drive, something like that. The other end of the spectrum is literally take a weekend or a week or a month or whatever kind of writer you are, <laughs> however much time you're gonna need, take a trip, go somewhere else, have a hotel room or something like that and stay there and you're specifically there to write. So I have done this kind of piggybacking on work trips that my husband has had. I piggybacked and just kind of went with him, but I stayed in the hotel room and wrote and did YouTube work and did work things like, like my creative work um, the whole time. I would go out and go to lunch with them. I would go out and, you know, go to the stores or something. But for the most part, I sat inside and I wrote and I was like, this is going to be perfect because it's quiet time. It's my time to just focus on my writing. There are writer's retreats as well, specific retreats that are there to help you develop your writing. I highly suggest these if you have the opportunity. That would be a great way to just kind of have like say, okay, it's a mommy vacation or oh, it's a vacation for me or even Get a best friend to go with you or another writer friend and say, hey, let's go on this writer's retreat and just see where it takes us, see what kind of creativity we have. But those trips are great because not only do you get to meet other writers, you get into this creative field and it just helps you knock out books and stories like it's nothing. Tip number four is going to be set goals. So this kind of piggybacks and tags along with some of the other uh, tips. So one thing is you can set a time frame. See, I'm going to sit down and write for 20, 25 minutes straight through, and then I get a break. So that's setting a goal, write for 25 minutes, get a break, right? Or you could even do it for an hour or you could do it for two hours. However long you feel like you should be writing, that's up to you. You can also set these goals as word goals. So you can say by the end of the week, I want to have X number of words written or X number of chapters written. Something like that. I generally will stick with words because it's a little bit easier. Um, chapters could be a little sketchy because if you're like, I expect two chapters by the end of the you know, week, but if you're one of those you know, long chapters where each chapter is like 40 pages long, that's a lot of work. So I would set these goals by week or month. So if you happen to have a sporadic schedule like I do, my schedule's all over the place. Some days I work all day. Some days I only work three hours in the afternoon. So my schedule's all over the place. So I tend to say with, you know, these two mornings are writing mornings. This one is going to be a, a editing day. This one's going to be this. So I tend to set goals based off of my week. By the end of this week, by Sunday, I want to have this up, this up, and this done. So I set goals based on a week just because I know that, you know, if I don't get it done on Monday, I have some time on Tuesday I can get it done. If I don't get it on Tuesday, I have some time on Wednesday. So it kind of works like that. So little mini tips inside of this tip. Um, when you sit down, when you have like a goal, if you're gonna sit down and chop it out for 20, 25 minutes, wherever you're sitting it down and chopping out for 20, 25 minutes, there's always this little tip to do it in the same place. So that kind of gets your mind to a point where you know if you're gonna sit down at this time and you're gonna set this timer and you're gonna have this mu music in the background, if you're gonna have this candle burning, things like that, your brain goes, it's time to be creative. And it turns on the creative juices. So one little tidbit is just always going to be to kind of try and keep the same feeling going. You don't have to always go to the same cafe or go to the same bookstore. You can go to different places, but if you put in your headphones and listen to the same music, that's a great way of tricking your brain into going, hey, it's writing time. This is also good if you're studying for school, 
like our little younger writers are. <laughs> Piggybacking on that putting those little earbuds in or headphones on and listening to music, it's always a good idea to start creating writing playlists. So I'm going to show you my Spotify list. So first off, I have a Spotify list for writing in general, and it just has all this music that just makes me creative, makes me want to write, and it just makes me have the feels for writing. I also have creative playlists for sci-fi writing, for calm writing, for fantasy writing. And I don't think I've gotten past that yet. <laughs> but those are the ones that just, like I said, each one gets me in the mode of that type of writing. So for my sci-fi writing, when I'm writing the Kanda right now, um, working on editing, um, I tend to listen to Star Trek music. Star Trek music is the reason I love sci-fi. The reason I love anything science fiction, anything aliens, anything in outer space is because of that show. I used to watch it all the time with my father when I was younger and it just became a part of my life and I love science fiction. So ever since then, anytime I hear the Star Trek theme play, you might catch some tears in my eyes because <laughs> it's just that emotional connection and that's what music does. Music creates a connection between these emotions and these feelings and this creativity with the different, you know, whatever song you're playing at that time. So when I'm writing something in space, something very sci-fi, I tend to go straight for the science, uh, for the Star Trek themes. Whereas when I am writing my other, my other book that I'm working on, when I'm any, anytime I work on that, it tends to be kind of more darker music because it is a darker book. And it's also a fantasy book. So I use The Last Witch Hunter. If you guys haven't seen the movie, check it out. It's freaking awesome and the music is amazing. And I love listening to that music because it's that darker, mystical, you know, fantasy music that I absolutely love and it works perfectly for my next book. For my calm writing, these are gonna be times when I feel like characters are having a calm moment or they're having, you know, or it's kind of before the action takes place and it's just kind of like an everyday feeling. And I feel like I need to keep calm to write these really good like scenes. This is mostly going to be music from Pride and Prejudice, which is one of my favorite movies and I have watched it over and over and over and over. So using music to connect to these places, these creative places is a great way to do it. So like I said, Spotify, you can go on for free and start making playlists. So start making your own playlist and they have a ton of music and you can just search for whatever you know you like or whatever you know works for you or do what I've done and search for other people's writing playlists. And I will start, you know, snipping little <laughs> songs off of there that fit into one of my writing playlists. So these may be songs I've never heard before, but they work for me. So I'll steal them off their playlist and put them onto mine. So that's it for tips when it comes to finding your time to write. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check me out over on my website at christinabachbooks.com and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thank you.